Hey guys, it's Nanny San here. Um, I just want to make this uh, fairly quick video to uh, show you how I make uh, tuna salsa, uh, more specifically the uh, slow carb version. To make a long story short, uh, one of my resolutions this year was to lose some damn weight. So, in order to lose some damn weight, I am going to go on the slow carb diet, which was uh, first mentioned by uh, Tim Ferriss, I believe. Um, there's been other similar diets like uh, uh, I think like the low glycemic diet and I think like the South Beach diet follows a similar pattern but uh, this particular diet was uh, brought to my attention by Tim Ferriss in his book uh, The 4-Hour Body and he also did a post on his blog as well. Links and stuff will be in the down bar for you guys to uh, check out. Now on to tuna salsa. Okay, if you guys remember from one of my uh, very very early videos I showed you how to make tuna salsa which is kind of like a regular tuna fish sandwich, but with uh, added salsa and some other fixins and stuff. But uh, that version wasn't exactly carb heavy, but it did have a good chunk of carbs in it. Mostly due to the bread, um, I believe the barbecue sauce had some carbs in it, and the, uh, the, the chips um, that added some extra carbage. <laughs> That's a neat word, carbage. Anyway, um, the slow carb version pretty much is a back to basics approach for tuna salsa. It just deals with the main components, which uh, surprisingly are uh, low carb. Here is what you will need to make the slow carb version of tuna salsa. You will need a spoon, a bowl, I'm using a, uh, an all purpose Tupperware container, but a bowl is fine too. A can of tuna, uh, preferably in water. Um, I guess the ex extra vegetable oil might uh, screw with things. You can get it if you want, I guess. Um, some salad dressing, not mayonnaise, salad dressing, otherwise known as Miracle Whip. Most people might think, oh, this is really high in carbs because it's really sweet tasting. No. It only has one gram of sugar per tablespoon. And this is the regular version. This isn't the light diet version which I don't recommend because it has extra carbs, or carbage, as I say. Some salsa. Um, I got the hot version. Um, normally, uh, for the other, the uh, original version of tuna salsa, I got the generic Walmart salsa. But because uh, Walmart's kind of far away, I decided not to go and decided to uh, spend some money and get a name brand salsa. Just basically get the salsa of your choice, is what I'm uh, trying to say. And of course a can opener. Those are the things you need. And uh, in the next little bit, I will show you how to uh, actually make it. Okay, here's step one to making the slow carb version of tuna salsa. Uh, for the first step, you'll need a can opener, tuna fish, and a hole. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna set the camera down. This is mostly for like the younger kids who don't know how to open a can and drain tuna right. For the people that do, you can just kind of uh, fast forward through this part. This one's for the kitties. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. Um, so you got your can, and you basically see a little lip thing right around here on the inside. You take the, uh, the bladed part, which is uh, this part right here, and you just kind of set it in the can, and you press down until you hear like a popping sound, like a kind of lightly hear like a little sound. Then you just uh, turn it, like so. You can kind of see some juices coming out, maybe. I don't know. They basically just turn it, cuts through the can, easy day. All right. And as you can see, uh, some juices are falling out, which is good. And. Uh, Time to drain this bad boy. Okay. All right. So um, you got your like your tuna can, and it should cut the inside. If you got the ones that uh, cut on the outside, like the, the perfect can opener and stuff, um, you'll have to get like a separate thing or like drain it with a spoon. But for the basic everyday can opener, this should suffice. You use the lid, push it down. See the juice is coming out. Uh, just push it down. Make sure you you uh, distribute the uh, pressure evenly. You don't just be like and expect it all to come out. Use at least uh, six fingers. What I recommend. Um, 
and just kind of uh, spread, you know, the pressure so that we can evenly get out a good amount of water because it will make the uh, tuna salsa kind of soggy. All right, so there you have your freshly squeezed can of tuna. And in the next part, I will show you how to uh, mix it all. So stay tuned. Alrighty boys and girls, now that you have your freshly squeezed tuna, didn't think you'd hear me say that, did you? Alright, time to mix. So bowl, or bowl substitute in this case. It's going to be kind of hard to do while holding the camera, so um, I'm just going to have to sit you guys down again. <laughs> See, my hat also makes a good stand. Somewhat. I hope it doesn't like slip. You can see it kind of wobbling, but uh, hopefully it'll stay put. Now, as you can see, take your tuna, and you put your little thumb right there to kind of pop out the other end. See? Popping out. And this is this is where a lot of kids will get like cut, and even adults too, because they just don't pay attention. So safety first. Make sure you put your thumb under. Repeat under the lid. And grab it and you pull it out. Safety. And you can use your uh, little spoon to kind of scrape the remains, but uh, just be careful. Um, if you're kind of new to this whole making food thing, um, just be careful. So, put that aside. Then, as you can see, take your spoon, pull it out. It's really dry now, but, um, but with the salsa and everything, especially we got really... Uh, not really thick salsa that has a lot of water to it. Um, it won't seem like dog food. <laughs> but right now it kind of looks like dog food because it's all dry and stuff. So, as you can see, doesn't look very appetizing right now, but uh, give it a minute. And uh, you basically just break it up because, especially for the uh, the name brand tuna like Starkist, um, it comes in chunks, whereas the generic tuna it seems to be a bit... Uh, a bit more processed as far as uh, there's not so many chunks it's just really mashed up but I like it mashed up because it uh, goes down smooth not on me okay so just kind of mash it up and uh, it should look something like this there might be a couple big chunks in there somewhere but it should be fairly uh, consistent kind of mealy looking all right and uh, there's no particular order as far as what to add first. You could add the Miracle Whip first, you could add the Salsa first, and then the Miracle Whip. There's no special order. So, in this case, I will add the Miracle Whip first. And, uh, this is a little squeeze bottle version, which um, is pretty nice for guys like me who uh, don't, don't normally eat a lot of stuff with Miracle Whip in them. But I will now because I'm on the slow carb diet. And uh, like I said, only one gram of sugar per tablespoon. So this is pretty freaking awesome. Kind of a big deal. This is just the regular version too. It's not the light version. Let me repeat that. It's not the light version. So anyway, after that, uh, you get a little jar barf action. Jar barf. Remember that from the Conan O'Brien skit? Oh yeah. Um, not really sure how to measure it with a squeeze bottle. With uh, like either a knife or a spoon. I normally use a spoon because... I take out the Miracle Whip, put it in there, and then mix it because I'm multi-purpose like that. So I normally get uh, one, one and a half big tablespoons of Miracle Whip, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Maybe do like two or three little squirts. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. There you go. Okay. Um, then we got uh, the salsa. Um, this is the hot version of a Tostitos Chunky Salsa. Um, you can get like medium, mild, or uh, like the one with corn in it or whatever. Um, you just gotta look on the side to see how much uh, carbs it has. And uh, I don't know if you can read that, but right here it says sugar is 2 grams per 2 tablespoons. So yeah, pretty good for the low carb diet. So. <clears throat> Crack this bad boy open to the side. Um, because my spoon is covered in tuna, and 
especially if you have roommates or family, I wouldn't recommend sticking your spoon in here. Uh, so, in this case, just kind of um, be careful, mix it up slightly, just moving it back and forth, but be careful so as not to spill anything. But you basically just want kind of an even texture on top instead of that weird, uh, almost pudding skin-like texture that some new salsa has. Um, so you basically just kind of have to eyeball it. Get some more uh, jar bar faction going. Um, and just pretty much add to taste. I like, yeah, I like a lot of salsa. That's just me. You might only like a little bit of salsa. So just kind of add to taste. I'll add a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. Also, don't lick the jar like I did. That is a party fact. Because it's my jar, I can do whatever the fuck I want. So, anyway. Now we have this fairly delicious looking mixture. Not. <laughs> um, we just mix it up. And, uh, once it's done being all mixed up, uh, you pretty much just eat it. With a spoon. And you just mix it until it's fairly consistent looking. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, uh, and the finished product should look like this. Yeah. Pretty much like regular uh, tuna fish stuff, but but a bit more red with little things coming out of it. <laughs> so yeah, that is tuna salsa. Um, the slow carb version. Um, the regular carb version, I would add like a regular Tostito chips, like a little tortilla chips, as well as eat it on bread, like a normal uh, tuna fish sandwich. But because of the nature of the slow carb diet, I had to nix the uh, chips and eating it on bread. So yeah, um, this is the Andy San, signing off for now. Thanking you guys for tuning in to this uh, tutorial on how to make a slow carb tuna salsa. Be sure to comment, subscribe, rate, um, Send me some more messages and ideas because I'm kind of new to this whole slow carb diet. So uh, if any of you guys are trying it out or have tried it out, uh, um, I would really appreciate if you sent me your uh, personal recipes because um, I only have a couple in mind. And as always, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.